This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I uh, want to talk about pests, diseases, environmental factors affecting your tropical fruit trees, because uh, we grow tropical fruit trees, so this is a YouTube channel about naturally growing tropical fruit trees in Florida. And Florida is a spectacular spot. I'm from California and grew up in the redwoods of Northern California along the coast. And uh, I have a deep appreciation for forests and wild spaces. And um, I developed this, I've always had a lifelong uh, desire and uh, hobby of growing plants on a large scale. I just, I've had horses my whole life and I had a lot of room and I had a lot of crap. So uh, they went well together. And I moved to Florida, bought a house in Miami about like 13 years ago and moved to Florida and Southern Brevard Coastal County. Bought a house there and like almost 11 years ago and the forest really didn't like wow me because I didn't spend a huge amount of time in them. There were so many snakes and stuff, but the birds and the wildlife, it's just, I'd never experienced anything like that. Just so many birds and um, huge swarms of dragonflies and just incredible wildlife and um, I had never experienced that before so when I started growing I when I discovered tropical fruit trees and became fascinated with them uh, the achacha uh, iro mostly um, I uh, I've always grown organically and um, but I knew how to just do it with uh, manures, like horse manure and hay, alfalfa hay, and urine-soaked alfalfa hay and manure. And it grew tropical fruit trees well, with lots of water inputs by me. <clears throat> uh, when we moved to Tro Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, uh, or found this spot and then created Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, uh, I was challenged by people from my community and not in a very friendly way, just basically told me I didn't know what I was doing and you couldn't do it here in Florida. It's not California. We have pests, we have disease. Um, it's totally different. And I thought, well, how could it be different? I mean, don't they grow mango trees in India? Isn't that where they came from? I'm fairly certain that your Florida experts on growing mangoes conventionally weren't around to give the Indian people advice on how to grow them. <clears throat> um, so I searched up natural ways and did my research on soil and discovered that um, uh, soil health really is what you needed most here in Florida. And you really couldn't combat the disease and the pest pressure or the environmental pressure, the rain mostly, um, with how they did it, with the wood chips and the mowed lawn and the, um, I mean, it's just, I couldn't do it on a scale this big for myself. And it wasn't working anyway. I did the wood chips, I did the lawn, I did the cut down all this stuff. I got rid of all the, you know, I it was a monocrop lawn and fruit trees. None of this ginger was here. It was like none of these little trees. It's really hard to see stuff when it's uh, 
tone on tone green. So, uh, but there's lots of stuff in here. Um, and I kind of just started doing the biodynamic stuff because I knew that that was a known way to grow. But biodynamics was just a set of moon calendars and um, biological inoculants, which I didn't really believe in, but I did them. And when I did them on a, our grown out, I started growing out the lawn and um, I did them on that and it, it, it there were soil aggregates, which people don't even understand what they are. There's just, there's so much stuff that people, there's just, even it's so much information that coming out now. It's just incredible. I watch a lot of podcasts by the Bionutrient Food Association. They're, um, they're, uh, webcasts, podcasts, whatever they are, um, are all in fairly incredible. But they don't pertain to growing tropical fruit trees in Florida. And mostly, I mean, it's like some of the stuff they say. What I think they fail to recognize is that they don't include nature in their trial things. They don't have strips of nature growing their stuff. Um, and so they, and then they stick to old, um, old, uh, like practices, they stick to one practice and that's like, that's like all they push. And um, like uh, bubbling compost tea. Anyway, uh, I, I don't, I've never done that. I don't think you need to do that here. I, you for sure don't need to do that. There is not one way to do something. And with all the millions of ways there are to do grow plants, they've only really tested 0.0001%. And it's all done in like, it appears to be like a, what most people fall into. It's a monocrop trap of growing. And, um, they don't regard the life in the soil. They say they do, and they like have all these ways to do it, which mostly are good, but like they don't believe that uh, biology can provide 100% of the nutrients to your plants. completely. They don't believe that completely. And what I see they're missing in their studies are they don't dedicate any strips to nature. And in these natural fungally dominated strips, because that's what we focus on, this soil health and the fungal dominance of our soil, <clears throat> the undisturbed wild areas, between our trees, they don't have any of that. And I'm pretty certain that you need to have that. You can't like completely discount the natural side, like just like you can't completely wipe out the, scrape up all the uh, plants that are growing here, like just, and replace it with your system of plants. I believe that's what we're missing in the food we eat is the, in fact, I know it is, is the fungal um, component. 
the hypho, hypho, hypho net, network of fungi that lives in an undisturbed system. It's the only place that can live 100% well. You know, you're not going to get 100% of the ecosystem services provided by nature if you're disturbing it. And if you don't have any nature, you ain't going to get any. So that's why we don't have the, that's why fungal systems are so degraded in the U.S. It's from uh, people thinking they know more than nature and excluding nature. So we don't have any pest and disease issues here. And I know that my community, the tropical fruit people, they, ha they have a whole section dedicated to, uh, I think it's mango disease. And they never get a cure. They do a, without even doing a sap analysis test, they're able to tell you what's wrong with your tree and what to apply. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, nutrition, people. It's not. It's biological nutrition that you can only get for these tropical tr fruit trees with a wild system. That's why we can grow all citrus without any issues without having to water it. I had noticed that citrus really likes to colonize grass around itself, so... I mean, like I said, I take a, I, I, I try to keep up on the science of the biology. It's kind of hard right now. It's like, there's so much of it. But, um, I mean, it's this has been proven that if you don't have any plant material in your sand that if you get pounding torrential rains and you're mowing over strips in between that your soil pH is going to change and favor uh, like aluminum. Then if you're like feeding these uh, water soluble nutrients then um, trees that are fed water-soluble nutrients like NPK fertilizers that dissolve in water, then they are not going to form a relationship with the fungal network. And there's not going to be any fungal network because really it can't grow in a bad pH. Well, I guess it could, but it, it not if it doesn't have a living root. So, I mean, they know this stuff and yet they continue to do it and stand behind it. And that's what causes disease in your plants, people. It's your out of balance nutrients. And the fungal network that should be growing in all our food is how you get nutrients that create the enzymes needed for a healthy you. So if you're eating unhealthy foods, like we grow here and people don't seem to even pay attention to here in Florida. Which is, <laughs> some, some people, I know there are some that do and I know that I have people that want to know information and see it in action seems to really show people that, um, yeah, it works. So if you're eating those foods, then uh, you're more likely to be succumb to disease and those foods that don't have the fungal network inside the food because it's not in modern food, at least around here. I know and there's hot spots of good food like in Northern California, around the Bay Area, 
but this and Tampa, I think, has one, and uh, Gainesville. But this part of Florida is kind of, you can't get really good groceries here. You have to drive an hour away. There's some farms that have have the uh, organic stuff, but I don't know. It's hard to get what I want, I know that. So we kind of have to grow our own usually, which is what we do. And um, I know that eating healthy and having wild areas, you get healthy food, this is a mango that froze back, but it is coming back above the graft. All of them are coming back above the graft. So that's good. Um, this is what's needed. So the, the disease, that's how you get, and the pests, that's how you get. Now, what about all the rain? I know that we've had at least 10 inches of rain in the last five days. And yet, we don't have any standing water anywhere. I've looked. All the old spots that would get standing water do not get standing water anymore. People like to stick with the old system that's like so antiquated and uh, farming has, science has like sh shown the way. But some of their like scientists that give advice on growing it's like i just think that they are missing the whole you have to have wild strips two-thirds of your farm i think should be dedicated to wildlife in between all your trees so stay off of two-thirds we do the entire orchard floor is our wildlife habitat we don't Try to modify it and we stay off of it and it's pretty full of life so because of all this rain we get here and then they like have like bare soil uh, underneath all their fruit trees and then mowed strips in between it's like all the information's out there I, I just don't understand why they continue to do that it really should kind of be against the law at this point of what we know um, and I know that there's a major nutritional problem in uh, American food, grown foods. Um, they're not really, good. they're not good for my health, I know that. Uh, I have to find and grow my own stuff. And if you're not letting nature do what it needs to do to protect the soil, which is in Florida, stuff covers it naturally. And you don't let the grass grow. It's the only way you can, can, can process the water into energy through photosynthesis. So if this was all like uh, wood chips and uh, or mowed, this would all be standing water here. These bananas and these mango trees and these sugar apples and these garcinia trees and the sugar cane wouldn't be able to grow so fast if it wasn't for the wild. I planted so much ginger in here and I'm finally beginning to see it come up. Um, of course, it's really hard to see. And the problem we have with our tropical fruit trees and um, uh, that we bought from the nurseries, the chemicals started tropical fruit trees. Uh, the grafted ones is in a healthy biological system they just continuously produce fruit 
So your Sapodilla and the Longan. That's all they do the, for several years. Seed grown stuff grows much faster. Biologically inoculated seeds. So the disease is caused by the moder the you know the conventional wisdom of growing food here in Florida, and um, they know this now. And uh, the pest damage, you know, the psyllid that spreads the the greening, that's because of your farming practices, people. We don't push products here. Nature is our product. And it should be free and available to everyone. And that weed that you think is going to rob you of your fruit is actually going to help your system. Be bug free. Be fungal or disease have low disease problems and process the environmental conditions that are thrown at it. That'll be beneficial to grow your tropical fruit trees. <sighs> anyway, I know there's some of you that are like thirsty for knowledge, just as I am, and are doing it this way probably even better. And um, in fact, I know some of you are doing it better because I know you. And, um, but um, we need to do this. And I sure wish that they would like combine, these researchers would combine some wild areas into their system and see exactly how many acres per acre of wild we need to grow biologically grown food. And I'm fairly certain that if they would give it a chance, they would see that their acre would probably outperform their standard model of their plant list that they put in there and the degradation they preach. Anyway, it's Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I hope I didn't piss too many people off. Have a good day.